So what attracted you to the project? And um, did you feel right away that your directing style would mesh with it? Uh, you know, I think that... From the beginning, this movie was something that spoke to me because it really encompassed all the things I love in life. I love, you know, space operas. I love Marvel comic books and Marvel superheroes. Uh, I love 70s pop music. And I love raccoons, which I really do love. I, when I was a kid, I had a raccoon figurine collection that, you know, I, you know, was my pride and joy. So for me, this honestly was a dream come true. And it was something that... Um, and I try to say this with as little ego as possible, but I really felt like nobody else but me could tell this story because it really, I felt like built to make this movie. I don't know what I'm going to do now that it's done. I really don't. I'm like, I'm like, I'm really happy that people are liking the movie and everything's going well. But on the other hand, it's sort of like, oh my God, how am I going to ever, you know, have that experience with those great people that I worked with on this movie? You know, that was a great experience for me. Um... Well, that sort of leads into the next question, because there are a lot of humorous beats in the movie, but there's also a lot of action. There's a lot of there emotional moments. How, how, as the director, did you find the right balance? I mean, obviously, you had to find the right balance. How did you, how did you go about doing that? You know, I, I think for me, it's not as much about finding balance as it is about finding the core of the film. And for me, the core of the film was the characters, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and their relationship to each other. And everything else naturally grows from that. If you plant that seed, then the humor comes out, the action adventure comes out, the drama comes out, and they're all a part of, you know, one film. I, I really think, you know, that it's a, you know, for lack of a better term, it's a holistic film. <laughs> it's a film that, you know, is able to encompass all sorts of different aspects of life in one sort of spectacle movie. And I think if there's anything that's rare about Guardians of the Galaxy, it's the fact that it does, you know, you know, it's done with real heart by people who really loved what they were doing, and yet it's a giant spectacle film. Right. Well, and, and these are un, fairly unknown characters to most audiences, even though they're from the Marvel Universe, right? So was, I know I asked this question yesterday, but I've got to ask it again. Okay. Um, so bringing new characters like this to the screen, is that, is that a daunting, daunting task? Is it liberating? You know, both? For me, it was liberating to, uh, you know, have the Guardians of the Galaxy be the Marvel comic characters that I brought to life. Um, for a few reasons. Number one is because they aren't as well known, and less because they aren't as well known, and less and more because there aren't as many comic book storylines with the Guardians, mm -hmm. that there are less expectations on the part of the audience for what their story should be. And it gave me a fuller, um, I don't want to say control, but a fuller ability to just tell whatever story I thought was best. Um, so I felt very freed up by the fact that they weren't well known characters. Um, the music, obviously, uh, extremely important to the story. Speak to how important, if you will, the music is to the story and how you were instrumental in choosing the music and how you were involved in choosing what music ended up in the movie. Um, for me, you know, the real core, uh, the emotional core of this movie <clears throat> is the cassette tape that Peter Quill has that his mother gave him. It's his only attachment to Earth. It's only his only attachment to the past he lost. It's the only attachment to his mother that he lost. So right away, that's an, a, very, a very important object. The songs on that tape were all songs that were written into the script that have stayed consistent from my first draft through the, you know, the release of the film. Um, because each of those songs is a story that is basically sung to Peter Quill by his mother um, about, you know, him. And that is the emotional spine of the story, and it's what keeps everything together. The music is also very important because we have a movie with outlandish characters and, you know, very strange worlds. Um, and by giving them, you know, the people something as, you know, simple and as comforting as a 1970s pop song that we're familiar with. Uh, it helps to ease us into that strange place uh, while at the same time being a very novel experience to be listening to music while we're looking at somebody dancing through a dark temple of demons. <laughs> right. Um, so looking back on it, what was the biggest challenge that you had in making Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, for me, the biggest challenge with Guardians of the Galaxy was, without a doubt, just the amount of time that it took to make it. Um, I started two years ago, almost exactly two years ago today. 
Um, I have done little else but create Guardians of the Galaxy from the writing through the directing through the you know you know post production, and the amount of time it took was you know this has been my life. So that's a pretty big li risk to put your entire life into two 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 years of one thing, um, and that's a, that's a, that can be a scary thing at times. Uh, so that's definitely the biggest challenge. And what do you hope that audiences uh, who sit in the theater will, will take away with them once they see the movie? You know, when I was a kid, I loved Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars and Back to the Future. And when I set out to make Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't set out to make a movie that um, would be like those movies. But I set out to make a movie that would make people, whether children or adults, feel like those movies made me feel as a kid. That would tune me into that magical wonder of the universe that we all feel is there, but usually don't experience. That will make us love the person sitting in this, that seat next to us more than when we walk out of the theater than we did before we walked into it. And that'll make us love movies and love raccoons more than we ever have before. I can't wait for my kids to see the movie. Um, it, so was your first experience working for Marvel everything you hoped it would be? Uh, my, my first experience working for Marvel was more than everything I hoped it would be. I think within you know Kevin, Kevin Feige and Lou and Victoria and all the folks over there, I found the most wonderful collaborators I could ever have. You know, Kevin in particular is a guy who is very much like me, and very, very different from me personality-wise. And because of that, you know, he, but at the same time, we, we approach the work in the same way because we're never, we may get in arguments about where the movie should go, but it's never personal. It's never about ego. It's never about which one of us is right. It's always about making this movie the fullest experience for the audience it can possibly be. And that is honestly where we're always coming from. So there's never any real conflict. The conflicts that happen always work themselves out in the end by us just taking a few steps to find out what works best.